Hello and welcome. This is U.S. copyright attorney Eric Kelly. In this video, I will show one way for seeking U.S. copyright registration of music and or songs. This approach applies for up to 10 unpublished songs. And in this video, I will also explain what published or unpublished means in the context of U.S. copyright law which is different from the ordinary English meaning of what published or non-published might mean. And the reason one should register their copyrights in their music with the U.S. Copyright Office is so that one can have the full range of protections available under U.S. copyright law, such as, but not limited to, having the legal right to prevent others from using your music without your permission and or to have the legal right to obtain money from those who have used your music without your permission. In any event, let's get into this approach for seeking U.S. copyright registration for up to 10 unpublished songs. It is important to understand what publication means in the context of U.S. copyright law, because whether a given song has been published or not is a major factor in determining which type of U.S registration application should be pursued, prepared, and are filed at the U.S. Copyright Office. U.S. copyright registration applications very often distinguish between published and non-published creative works, and a song or music is just a type of creative work. With respect to U.S. copyright registration applications, very often a given published creative work may not be filed along with a given non-published creative work. That is, generally published creative works can often be bundled together in a single U.S. copyright registration application filing, whereas a bundling or a group of non-published creative works can often be grouped and filed together in a separate different U.S. copyright registration application filing. But the published works and non-published works often can't be filed together in the same U.S. copyright registration application. So that's at least one reason why you need to know whether or not your song or songs have been published or not per U.S. copyright law, meaning so you can better decide which U.S. copyright registration application might be proper for your song or songs and how to group your songs or songs, basically group your songs into published songs or unpublished songs. Okay, so here's the actual U.S. copyright law legal definition of what publication means. Publication is the distribution of copies or phono records of a creative work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership or by rental, lease, or lending. The offering to distribute copies or phono records to a group of persons for purposes of further distribution, public performance, or public display constitutes publication. However, and this is the last little note here, a public performance or display of a creative work does not of itself constitute publication. Okay, so what does all this basically mean? So generally, like putting your song up on YouTube would be considered a public performance or display of that song or that creative work. And that's generally not going to, by at least by itself, constitute a publication. Or if you're just recording your song, you know, the audio of the song, again, that's just going to, that's not necessarily going to be a publication of the song. But if you've already put your song up on a streaming service where you're hopefully intending to get, you know, some kind of royalty from that, that's generally going to be constitute a publication. Okay, so the approach I'm going to show you has basically three main prerequisites for using this particular approach. Number one is that it can have up to 10 unpublished songs, so 10 or less unpublished songs. And we just went over what published and unpublished means in the context of U.S. copyright law. The second requirement is that you can have one or more authors, but all the authors, all the authors must have made the same contributions to the 10 or less unpublished songs. And with music, there's a variety of different authors that can exist and, and also a variety of different ways that those authors can contribute to the given um, song or music. So for example, different types of authors, you could have a composer, 
a lyricist and or a songwriter. And all three of those, composer, lyricist, and songwriter, those make contributions to the musical composition copyright, okay? Now, in addition to a composer, lyricist, and songwriter, you can also have a performer, and the performer could be a singer, could be a musician, instrument player, the instrument could be, you know, a real tangible instrument, or it could be a digital instrument, or, you know, a software that, that is used. But generally, you could you have a performer of the music, and a performer of the music contributes to the sound recording copyright. In addition, you can have a producer and or a sound engineer. And the producer, the sound engineer, and the performers, those all cont contribute to the sound recording copyright. Whereas the composer, the lyricist, and the songwriter, those, those, auth those types of authors contribute to the musical composition uh, copyright. So that's the second re requirement. You can have one or more authors but all the authors must have made the same contributions to the 10 or less unpublished songs. And number three, the third re prerequisite for this particular approach is that the owners, whether it's one or more owners of the copyrights in these 10 or less unpublished songs, they need to be the same owners. So you can have more than one owner, but it's just that the, the owners across the board for those 10 or less unpublished songs that are gonna be included in this particular U.S. copyright registration application, they all need to be the same owners across the board. And for this particular example that we're actually gonna, I'll actually show you how to do the U.S. copyright registration application filing, This in that particular example, there's gonna be one single author who happened to have been the composer, the lyricist, the songwriter, performer, producer, and sound engineer. So she, she was basically all of that roles as a solo artist, which is very common, and she's also the owner. Um, so that's why we were able to file 10 of her unpublished songs using this particular approach. In this video, we're going to be doing a copyright registration application at the U.S. Copyright Office. And this is going to be for 10 unpublished songs. So this video will show you how to do that, at least as of uh, March 2023. So first I have to log into my account. If you don't have an account, you'll have to create one. So I'm gonna access their, basically the, the portal you use to do your filings at the Copyright Office. Log, log in to the Copyright Office registration system. You have to enter your user ID and your password. Log in. So I'll be selecting register a group of unpublished work because I have for this client, it's 10 songs that she has not previously published. So this is the, the proper US copyright application to do. And there's other copyright applications here to do for different situations. Like for example, if the songs had already been published or if the songs are part of a like a published album. And then even this is the proper application that we're gonna use for our purposes here. So again, this tells you no more than 10 works and for this for this filing we're going to do 10 songs so that this works for us all the works must be unpublished so we're going to click on start registration so we're doing a sound recording and we're going to combine that with the musical composition so when you're doing both and i can do both because this client she is she's done the musical composition work and she's in the performance work so we'll select we'll select sound recording go ahead and click and click continue so I'm gonna add a, the title of each song separately, and then the, the Copyright Office system itself will add a title to the overall group. That's what this note says right here. Note, a title for the group as a whole will automatically be added to your application. So I'm just gonna click New, and I'm gonna be adding each song. So I'll be at making basically 10 titles here, one for each song. Okay, so I've entered all 10 titles for each of the 10 different songs. So I'm gonna click on continue. So here we have to enter the, the last year of completion. So it says provide the year that the authors completed these works. If the authors created these works over an extended period of time, provide the year of completion for the most recent work you wish to register. So I'll click continue. And here I'm gonna be adding 
the author and the claimant. The claimant is the, the, the copyright office's kind of word for owner. Okay, so I've entered the author's information. So here for this drop down box, I have to create, I have to explain what the author created for these creative works that we're filing for. So hit the, the drop down menu. And for this particular um, example, this author, she did, she was the performer in the, in the unpublished sound recordings, you know, in, in, the, in the music. And she also did the musical composition. So she did the lyrics, the musical arrangement, the music itself. Etc. So we'll click on this particular one and we'll click save. We'll click continue. So this particular section is not applicable for, for what we're filing here, but I'll you can pause the screen and, and look at what, what they're asking for here. We're going to go ahead and click continue. This is where you enter contact information if some third party wants to contact the owner of the copyrights because they want to use the copyrights for some reason. So you'd enter that information here. This could be the actual owner's information. This could be an agent or their attorney, things of that nature. So since I'm the attorney of record for this particular client, I've entered my attorney contact information for this area. Go ahead and click continue. Now this is where you enter um, contact information for who the copyright office should, should correspond to with if they have questions about this registration application so if there's problems that need to be resolved so if you have if you have a copyright attorney preparing this for you this is generally be where they enter their information so i'm going to put my attorney information here as well so i've entered my attorney contact information if you don't have attorney representation you have to put your own information here so that the copyright office can contact you the filer if there's an issue with the filing so I'll go ahead and click continue and here's where you enter the contact information where the, the copyright office should mail the copyright registration certificate, assuming that this registration application matures into a, a registered copyright. So generally you would put the, the applicants or the owner's contact information here. Okay, so once you have entered contact information for where you want the registration certificate to be mailed to, go ahead and click continue. This is where you would do if this particular application needed special handling, which basically means that you need to speed up the application, which we're not doing here, that requires an additional fee. You would maybe do this if you were contemplating or about to be suing someone for copyright infringement and you needed to have the registration application done more quickly. But for us, we're not gonna be doing this. So we'll, we'll ignore all of this and basically just click continue. So here's basically where you're basically just certifying that all the information you've entered up to this point is accurate and correct and true. And so for me, because I'm the attorney, I'm basically the, reg the authorized agent, so I'll be clicking this field here. Whereas if, if one of these other areas was more applicable to your situation, you'd click one of those and then enter my name. Okay, and then we'll click continue. Now this is where we can review everything we've entered so far. So I'm the, I'm the attorney here, so this is my name here. And you can see this is the case number been assigned to this application. We're doing a group of unpublished works. This is a sound recording. Here's all 10 of the songs. And you'll notice that the very top one, this is this is the, the title that the Copyright Office itself has assigned to, to the 10 songs. That's why it says, it's basically the, the title of the first song and then nine other unpublished works. So I'm just going to scroll down here and make sure all this information is accurate. All the different contact informations we've added for the rights and permissions, for correspondence, to mail the certificate. Okay, everything looks good. So next we're going to do is basically add this to cart and then we pay for this filing. At this time around March 2023, I believe the um, governmental filing fee at the U.S. Copyright Office is $85 for this particular file, but we'll see that here in a minute. Then after we've paid for this, you then actually upload the 10 different sound recording audio files for each of the 10 different songs. Yeah, so you can see the cost here, the filing fee is $85. So we'll go ahead and head to checkout. 
I'll be paying by a credit card, so I'll hit this button. It'll take you to a different kind of area here. Pay with credit card. So then you enter your credit card information here. Okay, so I made the credit card payment. I'm gonna click continue because we still have to upload all the audio files for each of the 10 different songs. So basically you're just gonna select your, your files. Okay, so we are in the process of uploading our 10 songs, our 10 audio files to the US Copyright Office. Okay, so our upload is complete of all 10 songs. So we're basically pretty much done. Click here to complete your submission after uploading all files. So we are done with this US copyright registration application where we filed a group of 10 unpublished songs in a single application. We've entered all our information and we've uploaded all 10 of our songs. So now we just have to wait essentially for feedback from the US Copyright Office and hopefully there won't be any issues and we'll just receive the copyright registration app, uh, certificate in the mail. But if there are issues, they'll typically email me, the attorney of record, um, for anything that needs to be clarified or fixed. Okay, let's wrap up this video. So this has been US Copyright Attorney Eric Kelly and I do work with clients from all over the world and all over the United States. And as an intellectual property attorney, I do handle copyright matters, trademark matters, and patent matters. The subject matter of this particular video has been copyrights, and in particular, we looked at how to file a US copyright registration application that's seeking the registration of copyrights in 10 unpublished songs, and we th did this as a sound recording. But as noted, I also handle trademarks, and trademarks are there to protect your branding, and I also handle patents, and patents are there to protect your new and unique novel non-obvious products and lastly here you can see some contact information for me if you want to reach out uh, to me regarding intellectual property matters thank you please like this video and subscribe to my channel to help me reach others about intellectual property matters and here's some of my suggested videos on u.s copyright matters thank you bye bye